Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast. Uh, before we dive in, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. It helps grow the show tremendously. Leave comments in the comment section down below. Podcast can be found anywhere to listen to your podcast, of course. Uh, you know, Spotify and Apple. Please leave a rating on iTunes and Apple. Uh, it helps grow the show tremendously. So if you could do that for me, please, and thank you, that'd be great. Um, last year, last summer, um, I started a simple offensive section for football coaches. So if you're listening to this and, and you're not a football coach, I have no interest, then I'm sorry. Um, check out all the other episodes. But I wanted to start off a thing where younger coaches or brand new coaches have, you know, something to come to that's literally bare minimum, um, even youth coaches. There's stuff out there for everybody. It's been great stuff. Uh, there's X and O stuff out there everywhere. I'll go through X's and O stuff, but really, if you think about, I want to put out content out there for football coaches, brand new coaches, youth coaches, younger coaches, and maybe give some thoughts of, you know, maybe they never thought of before. I don't have as much knowledge as others, but I just wanted to give that out there. So we are continuing our simple offensive section, and then I will start off a new section later on in the podcast hopefully a simple defensive section. I have a summer thing coming out. So just things for coaches to think about. Um, so today we're going to take a dive into our simple offense. And we're just going to talk about different for, labeling the players. Obviously, we've gone to that before. And then formations, because people have different names for formations. So just give you guys different thoughts about formations. Again, this is really simple, but I want to help out younger coaches. So let's talk about formations and labeling the formations. Okay, so let's just talk about formations. We're going to talk about formations and how to label the players. So I believe I talked in a different video, but just in case I didn't, how to label your players. Traditionally, uh, your outside receivers, for me personally, have been X and Z. And it's like the alphabet when you're going left to right. So X has always been on the left side and Z is always on the right side, unless you have a different formation, which we'll talk about. Uh, we might get into that. And then your Y is, you know, People might get mad at me for this, um, talking about the why. The why is the tight end, and when you put them out into the slot, that is still considered the why, because and some change it. If Y is on the line of scrimmage, he's a tight end. When he's out, they might change it to an S. They might change it to an F, different things like that. But for me, I've always just kept it a why. You just use personnel groupings, which we've talked about in a different video. So if you go on the playlist and click on the simple offense, you'll be able to see it. Um, and then, so he's either a hand down tight end or a slot receiver. And then T for tailback, people put R for running back. It, kind of, it doesn't really matter. But for me, it's always been a T for tailback. And then the other slot receiver has always been an H. And then this is, again, people can put an F if you go air raid terms. That was usually an F. Some people call it an S. Um, I've had people use W because that person is going to line up on the wide side. Um, so however you want to label it. So if you're listening to this in audio form and you're, you know, I'll try to explain it the best I can. For listening to audio, the video, you have, you know, the, the best view. But right here, we're in a two by two. We're in a spread two by two. So for personnel groupings, to me, this would be a 10 personnel. Still could be 11, but I'm going to say 10 personnel. X and H are on the left. Y and Z are on the right. For me, depending on how you label your formations, this could be a number of things. Air raid, if you're an air raid coach, this is ace. Air raid spread calls this ace because Y is to the right on the line of scrimmage. How you label formations, it just depends on you. When I was an offensive coordinator, I called this doubles. Doubles because there's two on each side. And I did not have the Y on the line of scrimmage. I had him off the line of scrimmage. So X was on the line, H was off, Y was off, Z was on. I always had it off and I called it doubles. And you could signal it in with two fingers, you know, it's doubles. Um, been a part of where this exact formation has been called spread right because the Y usually has always been the one that determines the formation. Um, then I've also been a part of where it's Y is on, Z is off is spread right as well. I've seen this double. So just two by two is double spread, anything like that. Um, if you want to go air raid, it's ace. And I'll get to why I would may never call it that. But this was ace. So you younger co coach out there, this is a way to run it. So if you went spread right with the Y, he's on there. Now, if you go spread left, it just flip flops the Y and the H. 
So the Y would go to the left side in the slot. He'd be on, which means the X is off. H goes to the right. He is off. Z has to get on. That's why you keep it simple. Now, when I was becoming an offensive coordinator, I used doubles. Y and H were off. So you can flip flop. But now when you have the Y on, maybe that is your tight end. Maybe that is your speedier guy that can get off the line of scrimmage. That's why sometimes people use F, but that's just, it is what it is. So how this is how you can label um, this type of formation. The next type of formation, obviously, is your trips. So if you go trips right, again, Y is always kind of labeled um, which how to line up in this formation. Trips can, this is where it kind of starts to veer off into different things. Trips right, depending on what type of rules you have with formations. You have to have landmarks and how they set up. So if you go spread right, you have to tell that your guys in the middle of the field. Now you want your guy, you know, top of the numbers, bottom of the numbers. How do you describe top of the numbers? How do you describe bottom of the numbers? Is top of the numbers more closer to the line of scrimmage or to the sideline? Is the bottom or to inside? However you want. Do you want the Y to split the difference? So make sure they're lined up. right. Trips right has been a couple different ways, especially for me. Do you want the Y to still be on the inside? Do you want the Y to still be on the line of scrimmage? So if you're a person who does doubles or spread and the Y is on the line of scrimmage, most likely you want him to stay on the line of scrimmage to keep it consistent. So then it becomes, where do you put the H? Do you have the Y C on the inside, have the H and the Z off on that side? So right here, it could be trips right. So for like air raid terminology, this would be early R for right for their trips. Y was on the line of scrimmage for them, so this would be like a trip. So you have Y, H, and Z on the right side, X by himself. This, to some people, is trips right. To some people, this is called trio. This is how you can label these formations. Air raid is early. Another way I've seen trips is the Y just scoots out a little bit because he's on the line of scrimmage. If you have him on the line of scrimmage, H comes over as on the inside. This has also been called trips. So this is another way to do it. When I was an offensive coordinator, I like I said, I had Y off because it was doubles. So when they came over for trips, the Y just kind of scoot in because I wanted the rule to be the Y was the one closest to the line of scrimmage. H would come over. So right now we have X on the left side on the line of scrimmage, Y on the right side off the line, H off the line, Z on the line. This was trips um, because I was able to move personnel around. Um, if I had a kid that was an outside receiver, but he was probably my best athlete when I was offense coordinator, I would move him inside. Sometimes I had personnel groupings and I put him at that Y so I could run bubbles and, and, and everything else. I could motion him, uh, maybe get him the ball. So this is a way, those are different ways to label trips however you want. Um, again, then to, to call it trio. So we're gonna go to the left side so that way we don't uh, you know forget the left side. Some call this trio where Y is on the line of scrimmage again. And H comes over, and he is in between the X and the Y. Y is closer to the line of scrimmage, but it's the difference. So in the middle of the field, he'd be about on the hash inside the hash. H is splitting the difference between the X and the Y. So to some, this is trio. Some this is trip. So true. If you're looking for what is trio, this to me would be like a trio. Um, some call this trips. It doesn't matter. Um, so just just be consistently with your formations. Um, so this, this is what they would call it. And then traditionally when you go spread or empty, empty is another big formation. So if we go back to our spread, right, let's just say X H on the left, Y on the line of scrimmage, Z off on the right. So you go empty, you want to go empty, right, or empty left. If we go empty left, you take the T he lines up with the H now we're in empty. X is on, HT is off, Y on, Z is off. This is empty because literally there is empty, no running backs. So this be zero personnel. You could run with 10 personnel and just move that guy out. Um, then if you went empty right, you just flip-flop them. So these are ways to label this. This is pretty universal. Everybody calls this empty. Um, so then if you want to go to uh, more uh pro style formations so this is where some get mad about the y if you go into your 11 personnel the y is 
probably a traditional tight end to put the hand in the ground. So if he's on the right side, T comes back in the backfield. This, to some people, can be called pro-right, which is what I ran. Even when I was an OC, I would say this would be um, pro-right. So you could say, like, I, I write. Some people just say right. So to me, this is pro-right because you're putting a um, tight end on the line of scrimmage. So you call this pro-right. So X and H are exactly lined up the same way as they would be on doubles are spread why instead of it because this is why sometimes um people keep the one line of scrimmage because if he was all around the line of scrimmage and you say pro right or just right he's coming in he's on the line anyway the z can stay off because that's what he knows so again you got to find a way to make formation simple for you and your players and keep a consistent rule basis for this um so for me personally if you've never called this pro right hopefully you learned that but yeah this is pro right and then if you want pro left when the Y would come over to the left side, H would go to the right side, Z is on, X has to get off because the Y is there, so this would be pro-left. Um, these have been pretty simple formations, pretty universal formations. If you want the Y on the line of scrimmage with two receivers on that side, this is where you could go trips closed. So if your trips left closed, people call it that. Some people call this tray, which... You know, that's that's great, but I'll show another way I used to call Trey. Um, some call this trio. So it'd be trips left or trio left, and the Y comes on the line of scrimmage. I used to run this formation a lot. Um, now let's get into Trey. Now, again, you have some formations that may not necessarily follow your rules. So especially when I was OC, if we move – you know, this guy a little bit more to the left to the left hash. I would call Trey right. Now I know what you're saying. Well, usually the Y dictates where you line up. And I said, well, this was a way to break those rules. We always have rules to be broken and blocking rules and in, in anything, there's always something somewhere where you're gonna break a rule. I would say Trey right. And I said the Y ends with the word, so he's on the line of scrimmage. And for some reason, that sticked with the players. So if you go Trey right, um, there's two ways to do this for you guys. Trey right, you could have the Y be on the left side on the line of scrimmage, and the other three guys on the other side. Z would be on, okay. H would be in between the line of script, the, the line and the Z out farther a little bit. The X splits the difference between the H and the line of scrimmage. So the, your X would be your slot receiver, H would be another slot receiver, and your Z would be your number one receiver. And the Y's on the line of scrimmage on the other side. To me, this was always Trey, whether it was a close and then the and the um three receivers on the other side. Another way you could do this is you could say, hey, this is Trey left because the Y is on the line of scrimmage and the other three know to go to the other side. Either way works for me and my kids. And I said Trey left, the Y went to the left or Trey right and the Y went the opposite because I broke the rules. But this was the only formational rule I broke. So they were able to remember it. So for me, then again, if I said Trey right or Trey left, excuse me. Um, y would go to the opposite. Z, that's the X, that's his side. So he would come out to be the outside receiver on the line of scrimmage. H would be the number two receiver. And Z would be number three. And he'd come inside. So this was Trey. This is another great formation to use to overload this side. Motion another guy to get across and everything else. And we'll, in another episode, we'll talk about different ways to, to talk about what call motions. What kind of motions do you want to call them? So the, again, these are the big ones where you got three receivers, which call them trips, trio, tray closed, trips closed. That you want to call this tray. Um, again, whatever fits you and your guys. And universally, this to me, this was trade, but other people call other formations. And there's really no wrong way to do it. Um, two back formations. Um, and then we have the pro right, but you want to go two back formations. So we're going to put our X and the Z back where they normally were. So it, it, this one, if you go air raid terms, because the H usually was the F, you could go green, which was right, and the Y set the formation. Again, you're seeing a theme where the Y sets a lot of these formations. 
Green would be to the right because the Y is on the line of scrimmage. Now Z is off, X is by himself. You got your T and now your H. This would be your um, 12 person, or uh, excuse me, 20 personnel because you want two running backs. So you got two running backs in the backfield. And that's why some call that an F. I call it an H. It's just how I was coached in it. So that's what I call it. Even when I when I played and ran the old school I flex bone uh, or the power eye option, this was an H back. It was F H T. So that's always what I've known. And so this would be green. You could go, this would be green. And then the dictate the to me formations as well. I should say this too. Some people out there and their formations dictate where the T goes and the tailback. Me personally, it just always depended on the play. I didn't really like dictating because if I said doubles, if you and then it just started to add more. If you said doubles north, that's telling the running back to line up on the right side. You could say doubles south, tells them to line up on the left side. For me, it was just kind of where the play was going. So if you called doubles right or spread right, like we were talking about, and you called, I, I don't care, inside zone left, he's lined up on the right side because he's going to go to the left. You, you see, you, you know, so some coaches out there want to dictate. So if it was doubles north, he's lined up on the right side, so he can call inside zone left. You know what I mean? For me, it just kind of, for me to make it easier was play calling. Just what is the play? Where is he going? Um, for this one, it, that's why people like this. So they could go green and then say south, and it's going to tell the running back to line up on the left side, H line up on the right side. Um, just kind of depends. Now you can be universal on who gets the ball and everything else. Um, that's a whole other th- time for topic for a different day. So to me, the H and the T just pound your your, op- your 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 offense where he's going to line up. So to me, this would be green. And then if you went blue, the opposite Y goes to the left side. T and H will flip however you want to call the play. Um, you know, a lot of people run this. So then if you want to go um, green heavy which is another way to do this, or green closed, because that's how I've always known this, then the Y comes inside. So some could go that. You could go pro right heavy, which brings the running backs in, and I'll show you what I think heavy is um, or wings. So different ways. So for me, this could be pro, This could be green right closed, um, green right whatever. So this is a way to talk about this universally. That's how I know when I was an offense coordinator, um, I could go, I, I write, which the tight end was in anyway. Um, and you could, I would go, I write, and we have two running backs in the backfield anyway. And then I would call, I write flex because we're going to flex the Y out. So another formation to call this, you could call it pro right flex. And it's going to be, and you're if you're a spread team or a pistol team, whatever, and you have the two running backs, this could be pro right flex and it flexes them out. Another way to go it, same thing, pro left flex flexes them out. So different ways just to call with the two guys in the backfield. So then if you want to go like pro left, um, you know, and you have two running backs because you're an I formation team, um, if you want to call this blue tight. You can do that. Um, blue left close you could do that as well. If you want to make this heavier, you could go blue left heavy. Okay. Blue left heavy brings him in and the H as a sniffer, and you could put him wherever you want. These this is a great formation. Y is on the line of scrimmage. X is off. Z is on the other side on the line of scrimmage. H is lined up between the guard and the tackle as that sniffer. And this is a great way to overload motion and move and all that good stuff. So if you went green, right, or not even green, right, I'm saying you could say green closed heavy here. Now the Y is on the right on the line of scrimmage. H is that sniffer back between the right guard and the tackle. Z is off, X is on. Green closed heavy is a way to call this. Um, You could call this, or you could come up with a whole different name for this. This could be pro-right heavy, so the Y is already in there. So pro-right heavy, simple terminology. You can come up with a whole other name. You could say, hey, heavy right, because the Y is there. You could go that route as well. Another good formation that I used to use, 
when I was an offensive coordinator is I would have the X and the Z on the left side. I would bring in another tight end and I would call the, so before I jump in there, I apologize. So X and Z out there off the line on their sides, X on the left, Z's on the right. The reason why I never called the, the, the two by two ace is because this was ace to me. I know if you guys are watching the video, the H is on to me, that would be another tight end. So that'd be a Y. So I'd have double tight. This would be two tight ends. So this was ace to me. This is a great formation. Then what I would do is I would bring the Z over to the left. They're both off. X and Z are off. I would call this twins left. Some call the two by two twins. They'd say twins right or left. So since I call the other one doubles, this would be twins left. We have two tight ends and two of our receivers on the other side. We're really overloading that side. We can motion them over, get a jet game going. We can do other things. So if we said twins right, Z comes over to his respective side and X comes over and is there. So it look it's similar to Trey, but instead of having the three receivers out, we bring another guy close in to add another gap in the run game. So I would call this twins. I'll go twins right or twins left. Great formation. Then if I wanted these guys in wings, if you want to get start getting into option stuff, I would say ace wing because we're going to have the two tight ends and there are wing spots. So the X and Z have to get on. My two tight ends that were on the line scrimmage are now wings. And then every formation you can make a wing. So if you said wing right, the Y was setting it already. Now you just got to make sure you sub in the right guy you want as a wing. So wing right, the Y comes in, he's a wing. He's a step or two to the right of the tackle and a, about a yard back, a step or two back. Maybe not a full yard, but about that step back. So this would be wing right. If we said wing left, he can, Y comes over to the left. H now flips over and is the slot receiver. So this was wing left. If you want a trips right wing, the Y would come over as a wing. You have your H off and your Z on. So it's trips right wing or trio right wing whatever you want to call it. Same thing went to the left side, the wing on the left side. If you wanted pro right wing, the tight end is on the line of scrimmage. The Z is off pro right wing. You could have the uh, seven, a guy in the H is the wing. So now you have your tight on the line of scrimmage and the wings there. If you, and you could do that. You could go pro right wing left. So now this H is wing on the left side to get different formations, especially if you're going to try to do motion option, which I'll get to later when we talk about motions. Like I said, there's so many formations. I'm just here to show and give different ideas. If you just wanted to have just a sniffer, you could go, you could call it King. I've seen King where you're in this pistol and the H H is to the right of the quarterback, even with him, and the tailback's in the back like a pistol look. I've seen this called king because you got the Y and the H on the right side. Then queen flips the H over. I've seen that. I've seen it where it's called king, king weak. So the Y stays on the right side in this pistol look, and the H flips over because it's king weak. Then queen goes to the left side. Y is on the left. Z is off. H is on the same side, you could go queen and then queen weak, he goes to the other side. You can even make this where it's not lined up even, you could have it be an H back. So right here could be queen and have the H go in between the left tackle and left guard because queen's on the left. Queen weak goes to the other side. This is going back to dictating where these guys line up as the running backs. So like queen would be this heavy, you run inside zone left. The H is the split zone guy because you're getting, you know, that's weaker on the backside quarter. I can keep it. He's got this extra blocker going out. If they're way, if they have another extra guy out here and you think you can run an insert, you think you could have a bubble, some of that. So you say, then you go queen weak because you want the X and the Y to block and you run a split zone release and the H backs running here and they're blocking that bubble. So that's why you can dictate where they go on formations. So just, ton, again, tons of names, tons of names that you can use in this. And I'm strictly speaking from a simple spread offensive terminology. You've noticed we're in spread. Um, I'll, if I, if I want to do a video, we'll do another one on I formation stuff. 
but this just just been different ways and that I have used in the past of how to label different formations and different terminology. So that wraps up this episode. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. That's just how I've used formations in the past and how, what we've labeled them and what we use, how we label players. So hopefully youth coaches got something out of it. Hopefully somebody got something out of it. Um, be on the lookout for other simple spread offensive stuff coming out or simple offensive videos coming out. Um, be on the lookout for summer ball talk, organizational stuff coming out and be on the lookout, hopefully for some simple defensive stuff. And of course, reaching out to coaches to be on this podcast. So be on the lookout for that. Check out all the other episodes on the podcast. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, please rate it on iTunes and all that good stuff. Check out all the affiliates in the description below. Um, thank you guys for watching and or listening. Um, check out everything else. This is Coach Steve, another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast, and we will see you next time.